Please take your seats quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Hi, guys. Welcome to OneMinuteTennis.com. In today's session, I want to talk to you about rotation in the ground stroke. And I want to show you how you can get real rotational energy and momentum into your strokes by not rotating. Now, in the past, the ground strokes were a linear motion where we would hit straight through the ball. But for 20, maybe 30 years now, they've become more and more rotational as we swing across and around the body to create energy and power. And this has resulted in ground strokes becoming faster and safer and more consistent. But at the heart of the stroke, to get that rotational energy into the ball, it's essential that you actually stop the rotation. So we coil and go around to the side, whether it's open stance, semi-open, neutral stance, it doesn't matter. We coil away from contact and then recoil into contact. But right on the contact point here, the body actually stops rotating and the arm is projected ahead of the body and the racket is projected ahead of the arm. So what really happens in the ground stroke is that we have to have rotational energy to power the stroke and then we stop the rotation of the body to transfer this energy into the ball. The body becomes inert and the energy has to go somewhere and it will travel into the ball if you slow the rotation down. If you continue the rotation, then you won't transfer that energy into the ball. You'll retain it. A great example of this is a super simple physics experiment. And it's an example of Newton's first law of motion or often called the law of inertia. And I'm just going to touch the potato here with a knife and then I'm going to hold the potato and I'm going to hammer the knife and obviously the potato will be hit off the knife except it doesn't work that way the knife goes through the potato this is because the potato was inert and you see if it's inert then the energy will be passing through it away from it the same principle applies to your ground stroke Begin with rotation to create momentum and rotational energy. And then at contact or around contact, my body slows down and stops and becomes inert, just like the potato. And just like the potato, now the energy can pass away from me and it can travel into the ball and you'll hit the ball harder and faster than you believe was possible. And it's easier. But getting this perfect timing can be really difficult. Because the natural thing to do is for the rotation to continue harmoniously and smoothly through the stroke. And what we want to do is to swing and rotate quickly, stop or slow down, and then continue the rotation again. If you think about your shoulders and rotating from the upper body, then this will be very difficult to achieve. But if you think about your hip, then it's really easy to get great timing on the rotation and then lack of rotation in the stroke. You see... My hips are naturally squared up to the target. So when I rotate the hips to here, if I think about the hip and turn, then the hips naturally will stop here. So if my momentum is being created from the hip, then there's a natural squaring off during contact. If my emphasis is on my shoulders or racket or arm, then naturally I'll rotate straight through contact and retain the rotational energy that I'm creating. A good example of this is Nick Kyrgios' famous slap forehand. At first glance, it appears that he just hits the ball unbelievably fast by just using the arm. But you look more closely and you can see that he actually very rapidly and very precisely stunts the rotation of his body and therefore projects the arm racket away from the body, creating this incredible speed on his forehand. So turn from the hip and then the timing of this rotation and then the lack of rotation will be perfect and you'll get all of that energy being transferred into the ball. I hope this makes sense. If you like my ideas, check out what we do off the court. We have books on every subject in the game with great illustrations and very, very clear explanation. Or I'm helping players in over 40 countries all over the world with a unique blend of video analysis and then one-to-one -one personalized training. For more information on this, have a look at the website or email me for details. So use rotation correctly in your ground strokes. Don't over-rotate. Begin with the rotation and then slow down and stop using the hips as the reference and then allow the racket to pull you through and you'll have more power and better ground strokes today.
Thanks for watching and see you next time for more unique tennis lessons that really work.